I would like to welcome everyone to the pre-shutdown video. The start of 2023 has been an ongoing challenge for the membership and Unifor Local 88. The local union hall is still being rented on a regular basis as groups and community members continue to catch up on events that were delayed or canceled over the past couple of years due to the pandemic. The spring session of Port Elgin's Pell Health and Safety Training is wrapping up this week. It was another successful session for our members. Just as a point of information, the local union was able to send 138 members to Port Elgin over the past three sessions. This was done while most of the membership was on layoff and funding for the penny funds that support the Pell, Port Elgin training was greatly reduced. So I will now explain why the ses fall session for Pell Health and Safety Training is put on hold. I know a lot of members have inquired about the fall session of Pell at Port Elgin since the National posted the course dates on their website. The following information will explain how the local accumulates Pell and health and safety credits, which in turn provide our members with the opportunity to attend Port Elgin. With all the downtime over the past two years, and 2023 is not shaping up to be much better in terms of hours worked in the plant, our Pell credits stand at approximately 15.3 credits as of June 28, 2023. With the triennial elections less than a year away and the possibility of new leadership needing training, as president and the best interest of the membership of Local 88, the local will not be sending anyone to Port Elgin for the fall winter session of Pell. It is beneficial for the local to hold the 15.3 credits along with any credits generated in the 2023 county year until 2024. This way, the local will be short of credits able to provide the necessary training to the new leadership as required to represent our members after the triennial elections. The Pell Fund is funded by a formula of six cents per member per hour work. It costs approximately $2,800 for one week of Pell training at Port Elgin. To generate money required for one week of Pell, it would take 100 or 1,200 members to work 40 hours, which is 48,000 hours, then multiply it by the six cents to achieve $2,880. The Health and Safety Fund is funded by a formula of four cents per hour per member worked. It costs approximately $2,800 for one week of health and safety training at Port Elgin. To generate the money required for a one week health and safety credit, it would take 1,800 members to work 40 hours, which equates to 72,000 hours, then multiply by four cents to get $2,880. Also, in conjunction with the Communications Committee, the local will be collecting current non-GM emails from our members. This will include both active and retired members of Unifor Local 88. This master list will be used for the next triennial elections coming up in May-June of 2024. Also, this list will enable the local to communicate effectively and privately with our members. A form will be on the local website for members to complete with all required information in the very near future. This list will enable the local to also update our current list of active members. The list will not be shared with anyone outside of the local 88 except for simply voting who will be running the electronic voting in the future. The list will not be shared with Unifor National also. And with the announcements of the upcoming layoffs for the month of July, if anyone is in need of anything, please reach out to Alexander McCoy at 519-521-7052. In closing, on behalf of the Unifor Local 8 leadership, be safe and take care of yourself. Remember, with school out for the summer, take extra care when driving and watch out for children out and about playing. Thank you and have a good summer. All right, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my portion is going to be fairly long. There's lots to talk about, many different topics. These are not in any order, but there is a lot of information on this video. I want to start by addressing Facebook and social media. Someone put a posting up yesterday that says we are going to go to one shift and two shifts are going to be reduced immediately. Then they refuse to put their name on the post. Some people don't think of the consequence, consequences of making rumors up. They live for the drama and don't think of the harm it can cause not only the, the individual, but their families. That's why we make these videos to try and stop all the rumors. I'm going to start with trades. 
Um, the alternate trades rep has stepped down. There will be an election at some point in the future. The timelines are strictly up to the election committee, not up to myself or Brent or the uh, implant. Um, there's also a, spray, a special trades project that's coming. An outside company have agreed to bring in equipment for our trades to work on, and it looks like it'll last until the end of October. This equipment is used in the assembly of battery cells. This will be full-time work for eight tradespeople. This is very good news, as everyone is aware. Times are slow right now, and new work is always a good thing. Uh, the next section is a benefit update. This is written by our three benefit reps. When you are doing your EI reports with short work week, report as 40 hours and your gross earnings for the week as if collecting EI. People who receive overpayment letters for the 4% bonus, please reach out to one of the benefit reps. We are currently going through the appeal process and if we are successful in the appeal, we want to keep track of everyone who receives that letter. If you are off for the whole month of July, please be aware that your dental will not be active for the month of August. As of now, B-Shift comes back July 31st. If you work that day, you would have dental for the month of August. Okay, to continue, to continue on with the benefits theme, the next subject is going to be step science. Um, these are available in the plant. They're also up on our website, but we have worked on an agreement with a business called Step Science. They provide orthotics for your feet. This is not a highly used benefit for our members, and one main reason is it does take a few appointments plus a doctor's appointment to, get the, to complete the process. Step Science are a Canadian company located in London. Um, the actual product is also made in London. Um, they are using the very latest technology. They are here at the Union Hall every Wednesday. You must make an appointment to see them. Um, this is available for uh, all retirees as well, plus your partners and all your dependents, and it is totally free. There's no money that you have to outlay. Um, they will bring a doctor with them, and it really is all about one-stop shopping and making it more convenient for the membership. This, did, this just started in June, and the entire month of June was a sellout. They will not be here for the first two weeks of July, but they are back every Wednesday after that. It took us about one year for us to work this out with them, including background checks and with the company, uh, background checks with the company, and for Step Science to get on the approved Green Shield uh, provider list. You pay nothing; everything is looked after. Treat your feet. This is also free for everyone else in your benefits uh, under that are covered under your benefits. Um, the next subject are postings. Postings are going to go up this week, maybe even today. There are well over 150 postings closer to about 165, I believe. Uh, they are all plant-wide. There are some team leader postings. If you are a team leader, or if you're in the team leader pool, or if you have at least written the test, you can apply for the postings. Um, ER is also there this week. If you want to take the team leader test to be able to post, feel free to take the test this week. The postings are going to stay up for two weeks. The next subject is going to be the vacation payout and the July layoffs. About two months ago, we made an agreement with the company for members to take the option to have the remaining vacation paid out. This was just a way to try and find a way to get our members more money during a very difficult time. Then layoffs came and the entire month of June was taken out of the production schedule. For most members, by including the summer shutdown period in the layoffs, it actually helped them as they can now claim EI, sub or imp during these two weeks. However, the buyout option for, for vacation was now gone due to, the, due to the layoffs of the entire month. We have met with the company, and through talks, they have agreed to now allow the vacation payout, but with some very strict guidelines. We also want to make sure each person understands what this means to each of you if you want to take the payout. The payout is all about the current vacation year. So from last July 1st till June 30th, so this Friday, it's this vacation time only, not next year's vacation. So what I'm about to explain is strictly for this vacation year. First of all, you must have 40 hours or more to take the buyout. We are given an over overview yesterday by payroll of the amount of work needed for each person who chooses the payout option. Payroll cannot spend that amount of time for each person if you have less than 40 hours of payout. So if you have less than 40 hours, those hours will automatically be carried over and put into your vacation bank for next year. So to start with, you must have 40 hours or more. 
If you want to be paid out, you must elect all hours from the past year to be paid out that are remaining. So if you have four weeks remaining, you must elect to take all four weeks paid out. You can't elect to have three weeks and then carry one week over and book it. So it's all or nothing. Now the even tougher parts. If you are collecting EI or IMP, you should not take the payout. The government has informed us that your payout is going to be allocated to your EI claim. So if you collect three weeks of a payout for vacation, you're going to collect zero for the next three weeks from EI while you're off on layoff in July. It's strictly not worth it. You're going to get zero. Remember, these are the government rules, not Unifor, not GM. It's just our government. If you are collecting sub, there is no effect on your sub, so you could to take the payout. However, payroll has also informed us that the government will tell you that everyone who takes the payout, will be, it will be treated as a bonus. You're going to get charged a minimum of 30% tax to a maximum of 40% tax for this payment. Again, that's the government rules. You can collect the money back again, the partial next April, but that's almost a year away. So we just want to be very, uh, make you very aware of what's going to happen. Also, there's a lot going on right now. There's a lot of EI because of the whole month's going down. The payment's going to be July 13th, not July 6th. There's still a bit more. If you want to pay out, you must contact one of three people, myself, Mark G., or Ryan Roberts, by 8 a.m. this Friday. We must give a list at 8 a.m. to payroll for this to, to, for this to even trigger by July 13th because it does take a lot of time to input. Our phone numbers for the three of us will be included at the end of this video. There's more information yet. We have approximately 45 members in our plant who have carryover vacation from two years ago. All of those members will have those hours paid out um, in the first two weeks of July. Again, the company has to pay these out not only by law, but also by our contract. You cannot carry vacation over from two years. We also do not have the list of those names. It will be automatically generated by the computer after June 30th because that's the deadline for the two-year period. So on July 1st, we're going to get a list, or next Tuesday we'll get a July, we'll get a list. All we know right now is the computer is stating there's 45 people who have vacation payout. It could be one hour, it could be 20 minutes, it could be three weeks. We don't know that yet. Um, if you want a vacation buyout from this current vacation year, not next year's. You've got to call one of the three reps by this Friday at 8 a.m. If you do not call us and you're happy with your vacation, um, or you're, you're just, it will be automatically floated and it will be added to next year's vacation bank for you to schedule. If you would like to use any of next year's vacation in July, please email your department contact. We will have those names and numbers at the end of this video as well. There's one for each department. The new building. There's a new building going up south of our plant. I think it's pretty obvious right now. Unfortunately, I cannot comment on that new building at this point. It is safe to say that everyone can see the building being constructed. There appears to be four walls. It looks like there's a roof. But again, we cannot comment on what is happening. Talks may or may not be happening at this point. However, it would be great news at some point in the future if it was announced that that plant would directly help our plant run better and it would also be great news if our membership was included in that plant. Again, I can't comment, and talks may or may not be continuing. The next subject is going to be rotating layoffs. The union agreed to rotating layoffs last winter to try and get us over a major hurdle with downtime and try to keep all of our membership employed. Back in the winter, most people at GM thought we would be two shifts by this summer and three shifts by the fall. It's apparent that is not happening. I just want to take a few minutes and talk to each of you and explain what we believe is going to happen. Let me start by saying I think we have two extremely good people running our plant. Dennis and Bill are very good to work with. I think they both care and that goes a long way. They are still GM and money is always an issue, but they get it. Dennis and Bill want to do the right things, but sometimes their hands are tied, but they do try. I only say that because our pre previous plant manager could not have cared less for us. If she was in a meeting and she was talking, she was lying. She only cared about money, but I don't want to keep beating a dead lying horse. At least with Dennis and Bill, you get straight answers, and they do care. I will say as an entire over I would like to say as only as an entire overview of what is happening. 
GM wants us to run three shifts, six days a week, as soon as possible. I think everyone knows right now batteries remain an issue, period. We recently learned at an auto council meeting in London that electric vehicles made up, of thir made up 13 percent of all sales, this is in the U.S., in the first quarter of 2023. That was way, way higher, in fact, double more than what the big three and other, and other manufacturers were expecting. GM's also continuing to launch new electric vehicles. The Blazer is just getting launched, which puts even more pressure on our battery supply. GM is making lots of headlines right now for the right things. They're buying mines, they're building more battery plants. I believe they're building four battery plants in the US right now, but in hindsight, these should have been built a year ago. This is not solely a GM issue. All electric manufacturers are in the same position. In my opinion, we are gonna remain on one shift for months, way longer than anyone thought. Back in the winter, our committee decided to rotate layoffs as we thought it would be for a few months. That is no longer the case. I would like to state a couple facts. In 2008, approximately 500 members, one shift were permanently laid off. There was no work on the horizon, no one knew what the future would hold, and GM sat with us and told us that they were done, there's no work coming. In 2023, GM is stating we have work. We actually have thousands and thousands of orders. We just don't have the batteries. GM is not permanently laying anyone off because we have work coming. At some point, I believe in 2024, we are gonna be a three shift uh, plant likely working six days a week. The battery supply at some point is gonna start increasing and at some point it's gonna increase significantly. Secondly, some members have asked why we don't rotate two shifts. By our contract, if we work one shift, the top third of our members have the absolute right to work full time. Regardless of member suggestions to us, and there's been lots of them, the top three have to work, have the right to work full time, period. I've spoken with Brent and I've spoken with our committee. We are going to ask the members to decide if we want to continue to rotate three shifts or not. We are in talks with the company about two main options. Option one, the top three are going to work, no other option. If you're in the top third, 400, 450 people, you're going to work. You don't get elect to take off any other options. The contract's clear, we're one shift operation, you're going to work. Option two will be the top three can also work. However, the remaining two shifts will rotate. These will be the two options. We are planning on having a Zoom call similar to what we did in bargaining. Everyone's gonna be invited to join and we will go over the two options and let the members decide what we're gonna do. We do not have a timeline yet, so no one needs to get too excited, but please check our website for more information. We are in talks with the company to try and make some gains for our members during these times. We have had a tough three years, COVID, semiconductor issues, and now a launch. And I think the batteries are gonna be an issue for the next few months. So at some point, we're gonna do a Zoom meeting. We will need everyone's email address again. Similar to the ratification vote, your email address remains only with us. We don't give it out to other people, but you have the right to participate and vote. And the only way will be, we need your, web, or we need your email. So at the end of the video, there's also gonna be a, an address or something to put on here to please send us your email so you can participate. Details will come out on our website over the next month. Uh, the, next sub sub the next subject will be short work week, or SWW. Short work week, if you call in the day before, like you have a sick day or your kid's sick or there's an emergency and it's a Wednesday and they call short week for Thursday and Friday, it's your responsibility. We're trying to get the company to get the call in line going again. They will post a number on our website when we get that, and then you can just call that number to confirm whether you have to drive in or not. Short work week by the contract can be called at any time by the company if there is a part shortage or production shortage. It can go by the day or it can go by days in a week. If production is canceled for an entire week or longer, it is not short work week, it is a layoff. There's a distinct difference in the two. Short work week pays 80%, layoffs obviously pay less. But they are using short work week now. The company's told us they're gonna to continue to use short week. It is a cost saver by 20% to them and contractually they can use it. Um, the next subject will be retirees. We have four more retirees this month on July 1st, three production and one tradesperson. Congrats to everybody who is retiring. I attended the barbecue, the retiree barbecue last week. We had 200 members in our hall, all retirees. It was fantastic to see so many young at heart members back at our union hall socializing. 
Dan LaFranc and his committee are doing a great job with the retiree chapter, and I hope many of the retirees come out to our monthly meetings, have a drink, socializing, just get to see every, uh, each other again. Uh, the next topic is Big Three Bargaining. Big Three Bargaining is coming up in both the United States with the UAW and in Canada with Unifor. If you have not, I suggest you try and find the commercials put out by the UAW. They are extremely strongly worded, telling their members to raise their expectations. The Big Three have made hundreds of billions of dollars. That is hundreds of billions of dollars. And the hourly workers continue to struggle along and not keep up with inflation. Unifor is also coming up with ads and putting the companies on notice that this year monetary changes must come. I gave a speech at the Auto Council that has put me in a little bit of hot water with some people. I don't mind that. I spoke up on behalf of our, our membership. We can do pretty easy math. In the past 10 years, our American brothers and sisters have enjoyed profit sharing. I'm still waiting for someone in Canada to explain to me how profit sharing is such a bad thing versus cola. Anyone in the grow-in for eight years doesn't even get cola. So how can, how can anyone argue in the first eight years that cola is better than profit sharing? Just, just based on the tier two employees. Um, all I ask is for someone to honestly compare cola versus profit sharing. I have a pretty strong feeling that the Americans are not gonna walk away from their profit sharing plan anytime soon. But profit sharing is only one topic and just the tip of the iceberg. Pensions, wages, the different tiers, benefits. We have a lot of different issues to discuss, but almost all of them involve money at this bargaining. Brent Tree and I will again continue to meet with the big three and the national and continue to put our members' issues on the table. In closing, summer shutdown is almost here. On behalf of the entire implant, we wish everyone a safe and enjoyable summer shutdown. For most of you, it will be the entire month of July and that is extremely unfortunate. I firmly believe our long-term future is good, extremely good, but the next few months are gonna be tough. We hope to come up with two options and have a vote in the next few weeks on our short-term future. We are working on options and more ways to put more money into your pocket. I'm not gonna lie to anyone. I strongly believe we should continue to rotate all three shifts. In either scenario, the top three can work full-time. The other two-thirds are facing some very tough times and that is a long way from good. But you have an option and in one hand, if you take the rotating layoffs, you're guaranteed over $20 an hour to stay home. That's the worst case scenario, but gives you a baseline if you're out looking for a job elsewhere. But the other two thirds have stuck with us this far and we're not leaving anyone behind. The batteries will come. I think for a while it's gonna to be tough. We made a decision two years ago and I think more than ever it was the right one. Our plant would likely be closed right now if we turned down the bright drop. Our future is extremely good. We know GM wants three shifts and they wanna go six days a week. We are working on a variety of options, but I hope you'll stick with us or circle around and come back to us when you're needed. There is a future here. It's a very good future. We just may be driving down a gravel road for a few months before we hit the highway. But to everyone, take care, enjoy your summers, and hopefully we'll see everybody back together at some point in the next few months.